an introduction here in a moment to that. Um, and uh, in particular, we uh, run the internship program here in the Cuban office. So what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna give you a very brief introduction to the program, um, which has been now going on for three years, give you a, a sense of the kinds of projects that we do within the great program, and then I'm going to turn it over to the undergraduate and graduate student mentors who have been working with the students one-on-one uh, -on -one all summer, and, and most of the time will be the high school interns themselves showing you the work they've been doing to build a web resource, a web GIS and web map resource for the local community here and around Cayman and Lorian. I do have to walk back and use the presenter, or the, use, hit the slides here. So the GRACE project is a collaboration between uh, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan Tech University, and Michigan Virtual University, as well as a number of professional GIS organizations. And GIS is Geographic Information Science, which is a, a tool, a suite of tools and technologies we use to uh, map and collect data about where things are in and around um, uh, anywhere on Earth. And so the GRACE project has been going on now for five years, and the aim of the GRACE project is to train high school teachers and provide research experiences for high school students using GIS technology. And so it's a statewide collaboration, and we've been training teachers since uh, about 2013, I believe, um, in the use of GIS technologies, and then they incorporate those technologies into their high school curriculums. Um, since 2006, we have been hosting internships here at Michigan Tech, along with uh, a couple other host sites in the state of Michigan, to provide the internship experiences for the high school students to, to get some applied uh, some applied experience using GIS. Um, the collaboration and the partnership here in the Keweenaw um, uh, kind of changes year to year, but for the most part, uh, has involved uh, these organizations. So the village of Calumet, uh, the, the, the township of Calumet, uh, Wolfenberg, uh, Main Street Calumet, and the uh, Kekilo National Historical Park and its advisory commission. The internship itself kind of looks like this. The, the, uh, the students, and all of our students have largely come from Houghton and Calumet High School because that's where we had teachers who had enrolled in the mentorship program themselves. So working with mentor teachers, so here at Calumet, they worked with the computer science teacher, Mike Rowland. Um, at Houghton, they worked with Diana Hawking, who's a math teacher. And the students worked through um, a suite of online trainings to learn how, the, sort of the basics of how to use the technology. And so they did that, uh, most of them uh, sort of in between classes, after school, sometimes on the weekends, uh, under the mentorship of a teacher. Then students come in for an internship. Um, some years we've run it six weeks. This year we ran it five weeks, starting in, uh, on July 16th. And uh, we had 13 interns this year who worked uh, within the Geospatial Research Facility, which I direct and, and uh, uh, at the Great Lakes Research Center at Michigan Tech. Um, and Part of that five week internship and the core uh, sort of activity is for them to do some type of community based project. Okay? Something that the community has come to us and said, we could benefit from having GIS to do this type of work. And so I'm gonna show you a couple examples of what we've done over the last couple of years before we get to see what they did this year. So um, the first year, 2016, um, and, and I know many people in the room and they probably know me for this other project that we worked on, uh, but in 2016, the interns helped create some of the base information and layers and data and maps that we needed for the q and Time Traveler, which is a historical GIS or mapping resource that is collecting information about q and past uh, in a web format. And so they went out into the feed, they, they worked with historical maps and they they extracted the information off of them. They also, that year, went out and learned about the environmental history along Quartz Lake uh, with the aid of uh, some of the other MC social scientists and learned about how do we mitigate and use GIS technologies to understand how industry has shaped the coastline and the communities along Quartz Lake. 
So that was 2016. Last year in 2017, we did two projects. Uh, one was to, uh, with the assistance of Wolfeter, to uh, work on mapping local parks. Um, and so we went around and mapped, um, uh, students basically uh, developed a survey uh, uh, to go out and collect information about all the different parks. And I don't remember how many they were, 34, I think. Let's see if I have another slide, I do. So 34 parks in Houghton, um, Hancock, Calumet, and Lorium. Um, they recorded uh, 20 different variables, such as things like where are the trees, where are the paths, the benches, uh, playground equipment, sports fields, um, uh, water fountains, different kinds of amenities like that. Uh, they actually mapped it three times to ensure we had some data accuracy. Um, and made about 2,000 observations around, about the, the local municipal parks, okay? In also the other projects in 2017, so last summer was to do a project where the youth went out and evaluated how um, the built and social environment, so that is the, the places and spaces that we live in and the people we live near and around, how that influences youth use ability to use that space. So just because there's a park, is it a good park? Just because we put a crosswalk, do students use it? Um, and what, and how safe do they feel in particular parts of a community, okay? And, and uh, they really sort of learned to do applied geographical research. So they went out and collected information all over time at Lorium, uh, 254 different blocks, 49 different variables, about 1,200, I mean, sorry, 120,000 observations about the local community. Um, and these are just a few of the things that they collected information on. So since 2016, we've trained 38 local high school students in the use of GIS and other related geospatial technology. Um, about half of those students are now enrolled in post-secondary education in virtually any undergraduate degree you can think of. Um, they, they, we've got some in computer science and, and some in sustainability science. Uh, we've got some that went into various types of engineering, mechanical and electrical, uh, one's in biology, um, uh, one's in business. Two have since uptaken and become undergraduate researchers and one uh, former intern who, who can't be with us today because he's off doing something else amazing, um, uh, has actually won a Portage Health Foundation um, scholarship for the work he's doing related to health and GIS. Um, and several have presented at professional conferences thanks to the support of our partners. And so I just love to throw up a couple of pictures and some of those folks are still in the room and probably are blushing now. Um, uh, they got to present at uh, some regional GIS conferences for GIS professionals in the state of Michigan. Um, two of the interns recently went to California and got to present at the, the, the largest international conference for geographers and GIS professionals in the world uh, and got to tell them about the work they're doing right here in Tiny at Lorian. So I'm going to turn the floor over now because you've heard me drone on enough. But I'm gonna turn it over to Rose Hildebrandt and Nick Lamerick, and I'll let them introduce themselves and they're gonna tell you a little bit about some of the other activities we've done this summer before we get to the, to the main application. Go ahead, guys. Hello, I'm Nicholas Lemerick. I am a current undergrad at Michigan Tech studying computer engineering, and I've been part of this internship program for three years. I'm Rose Hildebrandt. I'm going into my third year here at Michigan Tech, and I'm studying psychology. Um, and I've been with Dr. Don for almost two years. So, in addition to our projects that we've been working on through our internships the past two years, we've also done extracurricular activities that get them out into the field doing real-world applications for GIS. So, this first one was geoheritage and fault mapping. So, we went out, um, was it Lac La Belle that we go out to? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And we helped uh, one of our doctorate students or, or PhD candidates uh, help with their uh, mapping of geologic faults up there. And then the next one is, oh, and then also
also we've helped do some ground penetrating in the radar and archaeological studies at the uh, Quincy Mine House, or Office House. Yeah. Um, we've also been taking a tour at the uh, Quincy Smelter down past Cullen and learned about how they're using drone mapping to discover uh, previously undiscovered uh, features in the area. So those are some field trips from last summer. This summer we took the interns out uh, on the Agassi, which is a recent vessel at Michigan Tech. But here they collected samples from the uh, cetaceous distribution of marine organisms in Lake Superior. Then we also took them out to Cliff Mine. So they had spent two weeks mapping in China and Warren. So this is an urban landscape. So we decided that we would give them uh, a taste of uh, an archeological landscape in order to see the differences in mapping both of these. So these trips were all designed to give them experience with multiple disciplines as well as getting them out into the sea runoff. Can we dive? Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Truffle. I'm a PhD candidate in industrial heritage and archeology span at Michigan Tech and I'm in the social science department. Um, my colleague here is I'm Michael Blooden. I'm also a PhD student in industrial heritage and archaeology at Michigan Tech. And I'm also the uh, historic district coordinator for uh, Village of Calumet. So I'm just going to segue really quickly into the meat of the presentation here and get to what the interns have done. But by way of an introduction, um, the last few years, Don's kind of overviewed what Grace is and what Grace does. And so the students, the interns, um, really focus on learning how to use ge geospatial technologies and then to apply them so that they come out with skills that they can actually use in the job market in the real world in college, that sort of thing. Um, and every year we end up doing some sort of project or a series of projects. And a lot for the last couple years we've really focused on doing research type projects, which mirrors more closely what we do at Michigan Tech. Um, so looking at the, um, the urban environments of Calumet and Lorium or Houghton and Hancock. Um, from those research-based perspective to allow the students to understand um, how you can use GIS or geospatial technologies to further that kind of research. This year we shifted a little bit um, and we wanted a project that was a little more locally focused and also one that would live after the internship came to an end this summer. So when we sat down to plan this, we decided to come up with something that would be a product that we could give to the local community in some way. And what we came up with uh, was this community GIS for the Calumet Lorium area. And um, there's a few different applications that we've envisioned that it could be used for. And really, it's, a, it's more of a, a start than an end game, but we're providing an infrastructure that could be used by municipalities, they could be used by the community, and they could be used by visitors to the community. So we've envisioned these kind of different ways of looking at it. And I'm not really gonna go into that too much because the interns themselves, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to them now, and they're gonna explain what our product, what our community GIS actually is, and how it works, what it looks like, and what it does. So without further ado, I think Miranda and Merlin are up next. Hi, I'm Miranda, and I'm gonna be a senior at Calumet High School. Uh, I'm Merlin Stephenson. I graduated from Holden High School this past spring and this fall I'm headed to the University of Michigan. <laughs> Come over here, guys. Let me help you out. So we spent two weeks gathering data around Calumet and Lorium area, and we ended up collecting over a thousand points of data. That's a lot of data. <laughs> so we decided we were going to make three maps because we collected so much data that we just had a lot of different kinds of data, and the different kinds could be used for different types of things. So we decided to make a community map for people who live around here and live in the area, a visitor's map for people who are visiting or passing through, and an administrative map that's used for the management of the area. In the community map, 
we decided to include the playground equipment and sports fields. That's for the for families who live around here where they want to bring their kids to the playground equipment, they want to know where they are, how close they live to them, so they know that if it's reasonable to go to that playground, because it's not so far away. We also included the structure types, so we know where the commercial buildings and where the residential buildings are, so they know where they can go to go shopping, or where they can go to be in a more neighborhood type of area. We also included the municipal boundaries, so they know technically where the boundaries of Kaimet and Lorium are, and where the boundary of the Kaimet Township is. All right, so the second map that we created is the administrative map. Now the administrative map has all the information that we collected from Calumet and Lorian. And that's gonna be super useful for administrators. They can go in, they can look at all this data and they can say, okay, uh, this part of the community we might want to uh, renovate or we might want to fix some features, we might wanna fix this road up a little bit. And um, because there's so much data, we have some really useful tools that they can use to filter out their search results to say, okay, I wanna look at this specifically. Now, another really great feature for the administrative map is that it can be edited. So that's gonna be really useful if the city has a road fixed. And say the road was previously in poor condition. Well, now it's in good condition. So the administrators can go in, make sure their information is up to date, and the really great part about it is that once that is updated, it'll be updated across all three maps, like right then and there. Now, because there's so many tools in the administrative map, we made sure that there's instructions in the page that can be viewed by administrators when they go in there so they know exactly what their options are and how to use the page. Now, the last map that we did is a visitor's map, and that's gonna be really useful for people who aren't from the area, they're just passing through, and they want to see some of the great features that Calumet and Lorian have to offer. So this map mainly has historical sites and um, recreational areas and like the location of those so they can go in there and they can say, okay, I want to go here and this is how I'm going to get there. Um, it's also really great because it has parking spaces on it. I know people that are from other areas are going to want to know where they can park their car and um, what points of interest they can walk to after they park there or within a reasonable distance. And uh, that's a, a pretty decent rundown of the three maps that we made. So. Hello, my name is Sam Oya. I'm uh, gonna be a junior this coming year in Calumet High School. And right now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to access these WebJS maps that we have created for you. So first you'll need, is, all you need is a web browser and internet access. And if you have those two things, then you can access this map whenever and wherever you happen to be. So first way to do that, first or how to get there, is you would open, open up the internet and you gotta type in a website called calumetmap.com and no spaces, no capital letters or anything like that. We'll do that real quick. <clears throat> so this is our page that um, you, you gotta go through before you go into the map and it has some uh, information about our great internship and different things we did. And then th there's a hyperlink right here that will lead you to uh, another website that will tell you about all like the past, over the past few years, the things that this great internship has accomplished and different things they've done. And the way to access these maps, see there, you see there's the CLK community map and Calumet and Lorium visitors map right there. Those two maps are the ones we created for the public and you can click on them and then it'll bring you to a map like that. And now I will let Anna come and explain basic functions of these maps. Okay. Um, like you said, my name is Anna. Um, I just graduated from Homer High School. I'll be attending Michigan Tech in the fall. So I'll show you how to navigate this map a little bit. 
<laughs> there you go. So, um, it was a pretty simple tablet. Um, most of your tools are up here in the left corner. Um, you can zoom in or out using these buttons in the upper left corner, the plus or minus, like on most maps. Um, if you're using a, a mouse, you can do scroll, use the scroll wheel on it to zoom in or out as well. Um, to move around, you can do left click and drag, so you can go wherever. Um, below it, you would see a little house. That will bring you back to the original starting point of the map. So, yeah. Um, below that, there is a little box. It's the full screen box, so you can click on it. It gets rid of the tabs and the taskbar. Um, you can get out of it either by hitting escape or by clicking on the button again. Um, it, down here in the lower left, there are some buttons which have various tools in them that some other people will be explaining later. There's more of them in the upper right. Um, this one is actually the legend, so it, the map is color-coded. This tells you how it's color-coded, so you can actually understand what it's trying to tell you. Um, so yeah, next to it is a list of layers, which other people will be getting into later as well, because it's got more information in there. If you click on a building, bam, you get this pop-up, and so it tells you more information, like this is a building, so it tells you the street it's on, which that um, since it's on a corner, it also tells you the adjacent street, which is oak in this case, and what the building is used for, which in this case is a commercial, which means it's a store of some sort. Um, to get out of it, you can't just click away. It will bring up another pop-up, no matter where you click. So you have to make sure you hit the X. That's about it. I'll be a senior at Calumet High School. And hi, I'm Jason. I'm going to be a junior at Calumet High School this year. So basically, um, when you first open the community map, it shows you a default uh, default layers of the buildings and the boundaries. This gives you this gives you a frame of reference of exactly where everything is. However, if you'd like, you can go to the layers list, and it'll show you what other fields we have collected. So, for example, if you open the sports fields. It'll open the data that we actually collected last year, and there it is, the sports fields that are in various parts in Calumet. And so it'll show the logo, and if you click on the logo, a little pop-up will pop up. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it shows what types of sports field, it, sports field it is, in this case, uh, horseshoe pit, and what park it, it's in, which is Agassiz Park. Then from there, just from the pop-up, if you hit that up arrow at the very bottom, it'll bring up the attribute table. So basically, the attribute the attribute table basically um, shows everything that it, that certain layer has. So for this one, it'll have basically park names and stuff like that. So this is more useful for um, the buildings. So if you went out to the buildings, there's a lot of information for that. So if you wanted to scroll down, it's basically like Excel inside of this web map, and. Another thing of these buildings that wasn't mentioned at the pop-up, so if you hit one of these, so it looks like the Calum Coliseum, there's actually an image of it, so if you hit the image link on the very bottom of the attachments, it'll show up the Calum Coliseum right there. Or where we are in right now, the seal to the school, so if you click that, that'll show up to the school. So as you can see, there are a lot of colors on this map, <laughs> really cool, but actually these colors have some symbology. So there's a lot of yellow, which shows that there's a lot of residential areas in Calumet. Moreover, there's commercial areas, which are represented in red. Um, there's institutional areas, which are in blue, so this counts for maybe schools and churches. And then there's industrial areas, which are purple, so garages, mechanics, and etc. Um, there's also mixed areas, so these mixed buildings can be a commercial area, but they may have some apartments in the upper floors. 
And then there are also some gray buildings. These are the buildings that we were not able to collect because it was we couldn't see them from the road because they were hidden. Um, if you click on the roads, it'll show the symbology of the condition of them. So blue, which is excellent, uh, is considering a road that does not require any work. It is evident that it has been paved recently. However, a road that is colored in red, this is a poor conditioned road. So you can see that it has a lot of potholes and cracks, but however, it may need a lot of work sometime soon. The same symbology applies for sidewalks as well. And going on from that, um, as you can see, there's little symbols for each layer. That's called symbology. So symbology is the symbol that represents the certain layers. So for example, the sports fields, which is just basketball and the sports balls and stuff like that. But if you go to other layers, for example, if you go to playground equipment, that'll show up a different symbol, which is a green flag. So there's one at the, this would be at the uh, CLK Elementary School and over at the GIF down in Morgan. Um, so if we go down the layers, each one will have different ones, as I said. So if we go to street trees, this one's different. This, uh, depending on the size of the tree, the symbol will be either smaller or bigger. Um, if we go to street lights, that will be pins. So it basically represents how, you know, how many street lights are in the area. So it has to affect one downtown China Met and downtown Morion. Um, for bike racks, I'll just find, sorry, most where, uh, dot, uh, where the dot is, that's where the bike rack's gonna be. Public art, um, some of these do have pictures in them, but not all of them. But for example, the one by the art center, there's a mural butt behind there with some seats and stuff. So that's another thing. If we go to sidewalk ramps, this would be good information. So if you wanna get up to a sidewalk with your bike or if someone's immobilized and has a wheelchair and needs to get onto the sidewalk to go around town. So then we'll pass it on now for a bit. We'll pass it on to Debbie here to explain the My name is Cameron C. Um, I'm going to be a senior this year at Houghton High School, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the query tool on the uh, community map. I just a little disclaimer first, if I accidentally say widget, that just means tool. <laughs> I, we had a, a hard time, we called it widget for a couple weeks, and now we have to call it tool. <laughs> um, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go over to the query widget, which is the little uh, magnifying glass with a paper behind it, and then you'll click say buildings. Now you can click on the down or the drop down list and pick what you want. I'm gonna do institutional for example. And then you can even click the structure use to see if it's occupied, unsure, or vacant. Uh, for this example, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, structure material, uh, whatever, whatever it's made out of, I'm not also gonna do that for this example. And you click apply. And it'll zoom out and show you all the buildings that are highlighted in green that are the ones that follow under that query. So I'm gonna, if then if you click on, say a building, it'll zoom to that building and show you uh, like its pop-up window. And then you can just click the X on the pop-up window and go back to tasks. You have to click up on tasks, tasks and then the back arrow to get to the other queries. Then I'll show you example for roads if you would like to see the excellent roads. You can see more than one. I'm just gonna show the excellent roads right now. Uh, and then you click apply and it'll zoom out and show you all the excellent roads. It'll always be highlighted in the same green color, just it's how you know it, what it was. And again, you can click on it to zoom to it. Then you go back to tasks, and I will show you street trees, and you can select by size, so let's look at all the medium and all the small trees. <laughs> and then we'll click apply, and it'll show with the little tree icon. Sadly, it doesn't change for size. We can't really do that with this tool but it shows all the locations of all the medium and the small ones, and the large ones are not being shown. And that is it, it pretty much how you use the query tool. I'm now gonna pass it over to Mike, and he's gonna talk about the base map tool. Hi, I am Mike Fraley, and I'm gonna be a sophomore at Houghton High School this year, and I'm gonna be showing you the base map tool. So the base map tool is how you change the background map on the web app. So 
how you can access the base map tool is you can go down here to the windows looking sign and it says base map gallery on it. So on the base map gallery, we first start off with the, well, what, what we have right now is the light gray canvas. This is what we have right now. We have this one, if you can see on the screens. I'm going to be showing you first the imagery uh, base map. So this looks like Google Maps. You have a bird's eye view looking down onto the city of Calumet and Lorien. So this is pretty cool. So you can look around while it's kind of self-explanatory, like Google Maps. But we have two really amazing maps on here. They're historical fire maps that we got from the QAnon time traveler. We have one from 1908. Well, they're historical fire insurance maps. I probably should have said insurance. Um, they're from 1908 and 1949. So we're going to be looking from uh, we're going to be looking at one of the maps from 1949, and I'm going to be showing you a building from this on this map. And it's going to be the Kelly Met Roundhouse. So this is the Kelly Met Roundhouse right here. And as you can see, it has some um, information on it that the fire insurance map had on it, like building information. And if you come into the base maps, you can um, change it to imagery, and then, you, and then you'll be able to see the Kelly Met Electronics building, which it is today. Um, so it's a pretty neat feature because you can see old buildings back then and see what they looked like back then. You can see buildings that are now not here from back then. So it's a pretty cool feature and I advise you to try to check it out if you ever get the chance to go on this web map. And I'm going to be passing over to Garrett who's going to be talking about the printing tool. So um, my name is Garrett Snurros. I'm going to be a senior at Calumet High School this year. And I'm going to be showing you how to use the printing tool. So you can get to any area you want and <laughs> you can use any area of the map that you want, go to that area if you wanna print that out. Right now we're just gonna I'm just gonna use the center of Calumet right here. And Just hit that printing tool right at the top right there. Uh, you could change the title of the map that you want and you can change the layout to landscape or portrait, whatever you want to choose. I'm just going to leave it like that portrait. And you could change the format to JPEG or PDF. And right now I'm just going to use the PDF. And there's a button right here next to the print button. You could Look at some different information right there. And you could change the quality of the print, the width and the height of the picture that you're gonna be printing. And then you just hit this print button and it'll bring you something like this. And it puts the picture on there right there and on the bottom you can see there's a legend showing you what the different colors mean. And the legend would change depending on the layers you have turned on. Right now it's just the buildings. And then there's a scale at the bottom too. And now I'm gonna show you how to use this search tool at the top right right there. You can type in any address or place that you want. And I'm just gonna use Carmelitas. And it'll put a dot right where Carmelitas is on the map. You can zoom to that. Brings you up to where the building is. You can click on the building, shows you all the information of that building that you search for, and right at the bottom it shows, yeah, an image right there. And that's Carmelitas. So now I'm gonna pass this over to Alicia, and she's gonna show you how to use the measuring tool. Um, hi, I'm Alicia Giacchino, and I'm gonna be a senior at Calumet High School, and. 
course, you gotta find the admin math, but. So as Merlin and Miranda mentioned earlier, we have some different maps and they all have different uses, which means that we needed to make some different tools for these different maps. So for our admin map, we have mostly tools that are meant to edit and to change the map and also just for the administrators to be able to um, annotate and draw on the map as well. So the first tool I'm gonna to show you is up in this more, oh, sorry, when we were practicing, I had a thing behind me, so I'm probably gonna keep awkwardly pointing at a brick wall, but <laughs> <laughs> this more up here. And then there's this tool called the measurement tool, which looks like a ruler. So basically this tool can be used for measuring either length or area. So say Calumet Village wanted to see how long 6th Street was so that they could estimate a general cost of how, um, how much it would take to fix 6th Street. They just put a point at the start of 6th Street and they can go to the end and just click down and then it shows right up there the miles, which is 0.45 miles here. And then let's say they wanted to pave a parking lot here in Agassiz. They can do the same thing and they just click here with the area tool and they can go down like this and just make whatever area they want to see in acres. Um, so the next one I'm gonna show you is called the draw tool, which is this little paint palette here. And this is mainly just meant to um, annotate. So say the administrators wanted to make a map of specific things and they wanted to print it out without actually changing the original map app itself. They could just go into this draw tool and draw shapes or anything they really want and print out a copy of that map. So Cameron is gonna come and explain another administrator tool again. I'm gonna talk about the select tool, and this is not on the community map, so there's no, uh, you, you don't really need to worry about it unless you're an administrator, but I'm still gonna show. So it shows you, or it lets you select uh, whatever's on the map, so say you have only buildings turned on, then you'll only be able to select buildings. But say you have 20 layers turned on, but you only wanna select buildings, you can come through here and turn off all those layers except for buildings, and then you'll be able to only select buildings. And so what you do is you click down on the select arrow and you can click, I'm gonna do select by rectangle for this example. Then say, I'll, here I'll select this school. And you can select as big of an area as you want, but for this I'm just gonna select the school. And then, no, did it select everything? No, just change the color, thank you. Then you can go and look at the administrative map and you click up in the options and then go to show selected records and it'll show you what you selected in the, in the, or in the uh, attribute table. And then you can edit it from there if you are an administrator. And next up with the, or talking about the edit tool will be uh, Andrew and Charles, and they'll teach you how to use that. Map, which is was built for the administrators so they can edit roads, buildings, and sidewalks, all the features in our map. Every time there's a new change in the community, they can update the community on what's going on. So for example, when there's like construction on roads, they can change the condition of them from fair or poor or good to excellent. So Chuck here will explain how this all works and show it to you. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna wanna do is click on the edit tool. And uh, we're gonna look at a road, and you need the edit tool to edit anything. So we wanna look at a road, and we need to turn the roads layer on first, and then we'll go to the layer list, and scroll down, and we'll do road conditions. And then, uh, so one feature that we're gonna look at is uh, Calumet Ave, or US 41, and it's right there. And uh, this was recently redone a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, but it was collected a few weeks ago. So uh, it's outdated. So what we're going to want to do is um, Well, 
there would be an edit tool in this three dots right here. You need to, to click edit, and you can just directly change the, uh, the condition from good, and it'd probably be excellent now because it's just repaved. And you could change the notes from some bumps and cracks to uh, just repaved or repeating paved or something like that. And uh, you don't need to bother with like saving it some special way. You can just exit out and automatically save. Now we'll pass on to Dr. Don for the Q&A. <laughs> so, um, love, first of all, are you impressed? Yeah. 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 These students learned some basics of GIS with their mentors, and then came into our lab in a matter of five weeks. They collected, uh, built, you know, information. I think they're a little modest about the amount of points they may have added about two thousand points, but they put an information on about 4,500 different uh, residential, commercial, industrial buildings in the community. Uh, they gathered up three years of data, which if anybody works with data and knows that, you know, the moment you forget, it, you know, the moment you stop using it, it's, it's extraordinarily complicated to go back and grab it and use it again. And then they, they built this beautiful set of web applications that are, we'll get the edit tool fixed. Don, did they uh, tell you how many polygons they actually yeah, drew? Yeah, they drew all over the four thousand. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, they, all in five weeks. I'm I'm so impressed. So good job, everybody. Here's what I want to do. Uh, let's start with questions, and and I think they should come up and answer most of them. So why don't you all come up? Okay. <laughs> Hold gaggle. And if you have, so here's what we're gonna do. I guess for the rest of the, the rest of the evening, as, as long as you'd like. Um, we're going to give you an opportunity to come and, and work one-on-one -on -one with the web app, um, with the students. We're basically going to divide up into three areas. Uh, we'll do the community map over here on the left. We'll do the visitor's map over here on the right. And the administrator's map we'll do on the computer there in the back corner. Um, and the students will divide up into groups and, and assist you with that. In the meantime, if you have any questions for everyone, please. What did you say the website was? What's the website? Uh, it's pirate maps.com. Pirate maps. Uh, yeah. Map. Yeah. One, map. Yeah. One, map. Yeah. One map. One map. Cameron, there's no S on the end. Make sure you. Other questions? Dave. I don't know if it's so much a question about the application, but would you guys consider doing an abbreviated presentation? To our village council. Um, I think there is such an incredible amount of information here, and there's so much we don't know. Um, that would be something, you know, yeah, I'd like to present it to the council and ask if you guys could come in and do like a 15 minute, 20, 15, 20 minute presentation. And then items like the Planning Commission and Downtown Development Authority and Historic District Commission, I, I think it would be, you know, valuable to them. You mentioned that on the visitor's map you could find parking spaces and you were parking lots up. Does this provide enough information if I have a 29 foot RV? Where can I park a large RV?
what's your you know, assessment question? What, how do you feel CEP to go into for a couple of weeks or a month and then come back and be asked to edit the data, like change the size of parking spaces or trees or something like that? You're not using it every day, which has obviously been good. How does it feel? I was here last year and we did some of the stuff last year. Well, not, we didn't build the web app, but we did some of this stuff last year. I gotta say, it was like being there again this year. So I'm not even gonna go back and do it again. I guess, I mean, for administrative purposes, people aren't gonna be doing this every day, right? But it looked like some of the editing tools that you were showing are, are pretty user friendly for the teams. And on the administrative uh, app, there is a guide that tells you how to use different tools. So if you oh, have issues there, they will they will be there to like tell you how to use the other tools. Cool. Don't think that's current here. Wanting to add? We did go back and look at the data from from last year, and we were looking for some of the park data, and there was less of that than we hoped for. But there was. So put yourself data. like in, in your position. Say you're visiting a community meeting and you wanted to know something about it. Is there anything that as a as a team leader that you would want to see in here that you just didn't have access to? Yeah. Geography is just so important in Bald Eagle and archaeology, and how you can use GIS within archaeology too. So I definitely think that I could use this in my major later. And I would just like to say something to add on to that. Um, I'm currently majoring in computer engineering, and where I'm going to be 
won't like you working with them, you kill these in some capacity. And you kill these, you use this kind of technology all the time to plan and design for new substations and hardware. And Merlin, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> what did you come to this afternoon was one of the things that you learned through this whole experience. I think it was this morning. Any other questions for the large group before we break up and give you a chance to come and see it up close and touch it and work with it? It is live now, so I saw some of you checking your phones. It's, uh, it's there, it's live. It's, uh, we actually didn't test the mobile functionality, so maybe you can let me know how that works. If the folks do, work on your phone. Um, um, but uh, any other questions before we split up a little bit? Yes, sir. Who will decide who has this <laughs> so that's a conversation I need to have with a number of the policy makers and, and, and local uh, officials that are within the room. Yeah. So, yep, that's a, it's a worthwhile conversation. It, it does work on the desktop already if you throw an S on the end of the HTTP at the website and your computer will, yeah. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Okay. Well, one more round of applause, please, for all the interns. give us two, three minutes to get the computer set up here for you. Um, if you guys want to split up into your groups and uh, the, uh, the local administrators who would like to learn how that works, you can go to the back and then the two community maps will be up here in the front.